Today, I'm here with Marius Swart, a seasoned CEO uh, who's led the growth of several companies in the IT and software industry. Originally from South Africa, he currently lives in Houston, Texas, and enjoys exploring roads, playing golf, and being in his music studio, which he has told me includes one of the most impressive collections of uh, almost every instrument known to man. <laughs> his newest project, Concrete on Demand, it's bringing concrete orders and delivery really into the 21st century. Um, he's going to share with us how using Titan has allowed them to achieve their goal and begin a major growth trajectory that has the potential really to, to change the entire industry. So Marius, thanks for joining us and uh, really excited to speak with you today. Yeah, Ben, good morning. Um, yeah, great to be with you and to share uh, what we've done with, with Form Titan. It's been an incredible you know, gift for this project and saved campus of ours and you know, allowed a very small footprint of people to develop this product, which we feel is a game changer for the industry. We kind of want to Uberize, you know, concrete and uh, make it very easy for homeowners and small contractors to obtain, you know, contract at, at any, any given moment without a lot of uh, lead time and complexity. So the, the Form Titan has helped tremendously in delivering this project in a record time. Great. So maybe just give us a little bit of background um, about the way that the uh, the company was before this. Is this a brand new company? Is this something that you know you had thought about? How did you think to achieve this goal uh, before you came in contact with, with Form Titan? Sure. So what happened is that one of the owners of the company and I have worked on a variety of projects in the past. Typically, he invites me in when they have... Um, some sort of uh, opportunity in the marketplace and they, they need, you know, disruptive technology for it. And uh, some of the projects that I worked on with him were very experimental in nature and, and, and so on. But this was actually a real operating business that he was part owner of. And, you know, he's seen some of the work that I've done helping other businesses grow and proving, you know, concepts and getting into market and all that. And he, he was curious what I would do with, with this concrete company. And when I took a look at it, it was very interesting because it was this fairly complex vehicle that was able to produce concrete on demand, hence the name concrete on demand, meaning that the raw material exists on the vehicle. It doesn't exist, you know, at, at the loading yard where it gets pushed into this big barrel that just rotates around and you've got one mix of concrete. This could actually change the mix of concrete, which there's a lot of, you know, if you think about homeowners, you know, somebody wants to do a little patio extension, somebody wants to do a little fire pit, and so on. They, the, the mixes of those concretes are entirely different. And, you know, for example, when you have a driveway. So what interested me was how could they bring concrete to the, to, for the everyday needs? And um, so immediately I thought of Uber, you know, the, how can you create a sort of, uh, I want it, I want it now, and this is what I want. And, and still be effective as a business. And so obviously technology had to solve that. You know, it's too complicated for a human to solve it. And we had to blend in, um, you know, telematics, delivery, a bunch of different elements into it. And Salesforce, you know, was a really good base for it. But to extend Salesforce in this manner was just very, very um, burdensome. And so we needed a way to interact with the public in a way that their data entry and controls around data entry was, was you know, as simple as, as Uber or Amazon. And, and that's what Form Titan allowed us to do. It allowed us to be very user, a non-Salesforce user focused in the way we command and we adjust the entry points. And so that allowed somebody that, you know, was a contractor, perhaps a single contractor or a homeowner or somebody that doesn't know a lot about concrete to interact with a pretty sophisticated backend. And it also allowed drivers and operators, you know, to, to record their deliveries and so on. So without Form Titan, all that front end needed to be developed, you know, in Salesforce. And, and then you, you ran into some license constraints as well with what you would do. So Form Titan just solved a lot of that for us and, and allowed us to, you know, to almost not think about the input side and just focus on the processing side because it was so simple to set up the forms. Great. And was there anything that you tried and experimented with before you you, you came to our solution? We did. We, we we tried to develop in you know in, in, in Apex, which is the native language of Salesforce. Um, you know, we, we tried to use their sort of form, their their marketplace, so to speak. 
um, communities. And so, so we tried all of that, but, but it just, you know, we just ran into constraints, especially with the flexibility we needed to have um, as we pioneering this industry, because, you know, there, there wasn't a model that we could follow that worked. We had to pioneer the way that people think about concrete and how they interact with, with data relative to it. So, um, yeah, you know, nothing was as simple as Form Titan and, and, and as comprehensive as Form Titan, you know, to, to do the things we needed it to do. And so how long was this period of the time when uh, the founder of the company asked you to come on until you found Titan? How long were you looking for the solution? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. We dabbled around with options for about a year before, you know, and I tried all the other form builders out there as well. Um, you know, and, and so I, I, we probably experimented for a year with alternative options. And it wasn't that, you know, we, we didn't want to use one or another. It was just what was the best one. So we took about a year, you know, started with everything native Salesforce that didn't work out. Um, you know, work with a couple of the, the forms and so on. And then when I probably discovered Form Titan, maybe I would say six months ago. And in the six months of, you know, working with Form Titan, not only did we complete the project, but I mean, we took longer time researching options than it took to put it to work and get it, get it to do what we needed it to do. So yeah, it was a comprehensive search. You know, I know Salesforce reasonably well. You know, we have deep developer expertise in our, in our, in our business, and and you know, these guys are full of ideas. And when we saw Form Titan and and looked at a couple of your videos, we thought this is too good to be true. And and before we know it, you know, we like, how did we miss this? How can we not have done this from the start? Because it's fast, it's secure, it's safe. I mean, it's it's so intuitive to to connect Salesforce to to users that are not inside the, the organization. And yeah. So it was a good find. So with all that, was there any concerns that you had about using the product, you know, before you pulled the trigger and, and, and got building? Yeah. You know, you're always nervous when you have a, introduce a non, you know, Salesforce entity purely because of the care Salesforce takes with its, you know, with its, um, with a cloud. I mean, they, Salesforce is defined by the cloud. So they took a lot of care in terms of uptime and, you know, availability and, authentication and security and so on. So there were those typical concerns, you know, am I introducing a weaker area here? And, 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 and so far, you know, no, I mean, in fact, Salesforce was down more than Form, than, well, Form Titan wasn't down once in the project and Salesforce went down twice. Once was a glitch and, you know, once was just an error that, that they made on one of their servers. So, you know, it, it, it's a very secure partner. The authentication stays strong. Um, you know, the on security loopholes or anything like that. And, and we bombarded it with it. And so, no, we were concerned about that, but, but none of those concerns were really bad. Okay. So just to dive in a little bit uh, deeper into, you know, your particular solution, what would you say was the most difficult part of your problem that you were looking to solve? I think keeping the, the user experience for somebody that's encountering concrete for the first time keeping that experience, um, keeping their attention through that experience was important because, you know, buyers of concrete have options, right? They can go and buy a ready mix bucket somewhere. Um, they can buy, you know, they can rent a little trailer and put stuff in there. So they've got options. And what we wanted to do is that when they come to concrete on demand, they have to feel that this is it. This is how I'm going to get my concrete. And so, yeah, that was the, the single biggest area that we had to solve. Uh, and we did. Great. And how did you feel that, you know, our team was able to support you in transitioning uh, to our platform? I, I mean, blown away. You know, Yara, Yara is this incredible product and you feel like you are, I mean, when you log on to Form Titan, you know, there's a little chat box down there, like just about every website on the planet has. And I had a question the one time, I mean, first of all, the videos you guys, you guys make are fantastic. I mean, they to the point and, you know, and, and they're comprehensive and they, I mean, you can find just about anything that you want, you know, from, from searching for the videos, but in the odd occasion where, you know, you have a, a brain dead moment, which happens, you know, <laughs> to the best of us, more than it should, but you know, it's like, gosh, you know, I can't remember how to do this part of it. And then I saw this little text box on the website and I thought, you know, I'm just going to click it and see what happens. So I click it and I said, hello 
with a question mark. And before you know it, Benny, you know, answered, hi, how can I help you? And it's I ask a question. And Yara was the, you know, the head entro, you know, answering me. And and he's, I mean, every single person I interacted with at, at Talk Titan was so smart and on it and passionate about the product. So, yeah, you know, I found the team very, very helpful, very easy to work with. And, uh, yeah, you know, it's like, it's almost like you don't want your competition to find out about Form Titan because it's like the well, secret sauce that you've got, you know, to make you faster and better than everybody else. <laughs> Well, you know, thanks to also your dedication to the platform and being able to, you know, really implement it and, and learn it and make sure that you're using all of the features that really are going to take you guys to the next level. Um, you know, that's a huge part of it as well. Um, and uh, we appreciate, you know, you learning and, and, and being involved. Um, okay, so I guess with that, you know, uh, I'd love to see a little bit of the solution that you created and uh, yeah, take it away. Sure. All right. So, um, and this is obviously my comfort zone being in the product. Um, <clears throat> so the first screen, this screen that shows over here is a calendar view for a work week for the company. And basically these icons, you know, on every entry means a couple of things. And the idea was that with a glance of an eye, you know, you can see what the jobs are that are being scheduled, are the drivers assigned, are some of these, you know, multi-truck jobs, you'll see a little truck icon on there and so on. So, so, and I know it's, you know, probably a little bit um, small, but, but so the idea was to see everything at a glance. The other thing that was important is that you could experience what the customer experienced at the glance. So if, if, if I go, you know, into a customer, I've got a way to look at the form that the driver uses, and I've got a way to look at the form that the customer uses. So if I click into any customer, there's something called dispatch order link. It opens up Form Titan, and I can see exactly what the customer would see when they log onto the system. They would see that they've got a job, you know, that's scheduled for the 17th at 11 a.m. Um, there's a code name for the job, and so on. And they can go and they can do a couple of things. They can edit who the on-site contact is. They can view the job, and if they view the job, they've got the ability to change the job, accept the job, um, or cancel the job. So there's a couple of things they could do. And so what Form Titan allowed us to do is to understand the changes that customers make. Because if there's a, a delivery already scheduled and the customer changes it, you know, the truck needs to respond to it. So, so we had this very simple way of just saying, what are you changing? Are you changing the address, schedule, the yards, the products? And depending on what they change, there may or may not be a, a you know, we might need to change the truck because some of the additives and stuff that they may have, um, if I say, yes, I'm changing the additives and then the additives, there are some trucks that use, that can produce red dye, that have a canister for red dye and fiber and these other accelerators and there are other trucks that don't have those things. So, so again, the decision-making during the entry part is really important for the customer to make it very easy, but it's also important for it to be very powerful. So there's a bunch of controls over these. Like if I select a certain product, it will change, you know, what shows over on, on this side. So if I mm -hmm. go to like something like Shot Creek, you know, it would change the standard rock and stuff like that, you know, on a certain level of Shot Creek. And, and so being intuitive on this side for entry is really important for people that aren't used to using software to, you know, to, to order concrete. So, and even things like changing, you know, updating addresses, you know, you can change an address by the name, you immediately have the Google map that shows you, or you can change it by an intersection even, and, you know, it, it changes interactively. And then when you update the address, it shows you what the address is that will be used for the delivery. So it's, it was very easy to make, you know, to make it intuitive to the customer on what it is that they're changing. And similarly, when you when you customers you know register, it was very simple for them to you know do you want to provide a card? Yes, I want to provide a card. Select the card, and all these these form responses are so important that it's fast and easy to <clears throat> to set up because you experiment with it and you you try and follow the Uber slash um, Amazon way of making it so intuitive. And Form Titan was able to do that without writing any code. It was, it was just awesome. You so know, everything we're saying right now, everything we're seeing uh, was built on the Titan platform. Is that correct? Yes. yes. And, and of course, as you said, it didn't require any code because 
nothing in Titan requires any code. And um, tell me also a little bit about the logic um, and how you decided to create the logic behind these forms. Um, was all of the logic also created on the Titan platform? Yeah, that, that's a good question. You know, there, there are some thought, and it's like with any architecture, there's some thought about where do you want to do what? You know, it's almost like, you know, triggers and sort procedures and databases. Um, do you want a logic that's sitting the, on, the, on the business rules layer or business processing layer? Or do you want the logic to sit on the input side or do you want the logic to sit on the database side? And so the decision was that there are certain logic elements that would sit on the form side. Salesforce doesn't do well with dates and time. It just doesn't. And so the logic for date and time constraints sits on the form Titan um, side. And, and, you know, so, so, so that, and, and there's a lot of dates and time elements obviously involved in scheduling, which is what this is all about. So after trying to use Salesforce to handle date time, you know, date time changes, um, time zone changes, which it's, it's a nightmare in Salesforce and stuff like that, because it uses the GTM, I beg your pardon, the, the uh, universal time code. So basically you have to, you know, convert everything from a time code to the current time zone of the user, but you can't access that time zone in a formula in Salesforce. So you have to write Apex code and we didn't want to write any Apex code. We wanted this to be declarative as much as we can um, because it needs to be extended easily. And, you know, because we're pioneering the industry, we can't write code that it takes, a, you know, a village to maintain it. I mean, this entire product was written by me, by one person. Um, you know, it needs to be maintainable, extendable as we take it to other concrete companies because we're obviously going to sell the platform um, to anybody that, you know, that pours concrete. And so, so the complexity of, of the scheduling side, we carved that out of any other layers and put that at the input layer, um, which then passes data um, to Salesforce that Salesforce can handle better than the, the raw data. So, um, and even what you see on the screen here is a simple little calculator, right? You know, people can go onto the website and they can say, you know, they can click on concrete calculator. It brings up this very simple, what is your structure type? It's a slab. You know, how many feet are you going to have? You what's the width and how many inches are you going to have in there? And basically it calculates it. And you know exactly, I need 0 0.09 yards, you know, for this. And if I have, you know, two structures, it will, it will double that and, and round it up. And so just the number of yards you need to order, it seems like it's such a simple thing, but it's not that simple. And so, mm -hmm. you know, because, you know, if you take feet and inches and you put it into, into cubic yards to order it, people just don't do that math in their head. So it was... <laughs> It, it was important to give, you know, customers when they get to the, the, the website, it's important that they know, you know, <clears throat> that it's very easy for them to log in, you know, they can register as a new car and all of this is form Titan. Every single thing that you see here is form Titan, that every response. So the entire front end to the customer, the, the, the website where it all happens that starts off as form Titan. And then as customers interact with the system, you know, and they access their jobs and they, they interact with it, obviously that's form Titan. So, so the logic that, that handles the ease of use sits on the form Titan platform, the logic that handles the, the dates and times and schedules sits on the form Titan platform. Um, and, you know, in the beginning, there was a little bit of discomfort of, you know, how married I might with form Titan, but then, you know, once you use it, there's no way you can do this without a tool like Form Titan. And actually, I would say there's no way you can do it without Form Titan because we tried all the other tools. And so, you know, it was a special project in the sense of how much can you do as a single person? And I didn't want to burden because it's experimental, you know, the resources I've got access to with something I'm experimenting with. And I didn't need to. And, and, and then it became a labor of, then it became a challenge, you know, you know, as a software executive that wasn't coder at one point, you know, nobody would allow me near a project because, you know, I think I know, but, you know, the, the younger generation programs are just 10 times as smart as I am and they faster and all that. But when they see what was built here, you know, 
it, it sort of, uh, it takes them by surprise. It's like, how the heck could you do this, dude? You know, you, you're not a programmer anymore. Well, you don't need to be a programmer when you live in a declarative world. All you need to do is understand the business logic and you can extend, you know, applications and what you have pretty spectacularly. And so, so yeah, I'm, I, it became a, a project I'm very proud of and, and, you know, and I'm really comfortable talking to you guys about your fantastic product. Thank you so much. And um, so we've, we've spoken a lot about the front end. Um, tell us a little bit about your, your experience with how the product and the platform as a whole integrates uh, with Salesforce. Yeah, it's, it's so intuitive. I mean, you can, and frankly, I mean, and I've read some of the notes that we, you know, when people like me discover form Titan and can't get enough of it, you know, you're so tempted to take some of the, of the, what is typically handled on the Salesforce platform and put it into form typing because it's so easy to do. So you are tempted to do it. And they are, as I said, you know, we made the decision to take some part there, but, but, you know, you have to have your Salesforce platform and there's some architecture requirements. I think that you need to think through the integration is so intuitive. You almost tend to do more on form Titan and, you know, besides just the input side, you almost want to take some of the processing side, and put it there just because it's so much easier to do it. But, um, and they work so hand in hand that it's, you know, you could easily make, and in some cases I would probably do that for other projects. Um, but in this project, you know, we relied on the strong integration and, and solidness of that integration has been, it's been, I mean, I'll give you an example of something that's, that's not intuitive. So in Salesforce, if you want to do an address change, even though the address is right there, and I'm in administrator mode, so this isn't locked, but I don't allow the users, the schedule folks, to use this as an address change. I, I hide that. And I, I, they have to change the address in form Titan because your, the interactivity with Google Maps are so spectacular and it's so fast that you can see exactly what's going on. For example, if you get to a place and, and you know, and it just, there's no entry roads and things like that, then, you, then there's some delivery notes you want to make, things of that nature. That is not that easy to do, you know, inside Salesforce. So I, I took even some of the, the power of the interface and I blended it into Salesforce so that certain things are done on Form Titan and not on Salesforce. So you were able to really integrate the two products to a place where, uh, your users, uh, whether they're customers or, you know, employees of the company, they, they don't even really see the difference between the two and, and they're completely integrated and working together uh, in, in, uh, in, in pair. Yeah. And, and remember that, you know, I, I have to just say that, that that could be done even far better than it's one being done here. The reason, you know, that there's that, that it's been done, you know, sort of lightly is because, you know, this is, I mean, the, the product is now live. This is the only product they use for scheduling. They switched off the previous product they had about a month ago. And, you know, and, but, but still the mindset was, you know, we, we, we experimenting with it. So I think there's a lot more that can be done in bringing in form Titan forms into Salesforce. Obviously you can do it through visual force. You can do it by entering a modal window. There's a different, a lot of different ways to do it. I don't think I've done it particularly elegantly but it's certainly very functional. And, you know, that's probably one area that I'll go back and, and just think of how can I bring, you know, the ease of the, the dispatch folks, how can I make it easier for them by the form side? But, but right now, what it looks like is that, you know, the edge strangers, and if somebody calls in and if dispatch places an order for a customer, they click on this link and you'll notice that it passes a, a sort of true variable field 238 there it passes a variable and then when it gets to form titan and i complete this form that variable will say that this is an order that's placed by dispatch whereas if i'm a customer and i place an order it, it goes to exactly the same place mm -hmm. because I, I could actually reuse the exact same form but what i've done is pass i pass another um variable into it that says Although it's the same form, this is a customer that, that processes it, and that changes the view. So it comes to exactly the same form, but it changes the view because when, when the team looks at the jobs, the solid triangle 
needs was created by a customer, 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 and the 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 sort of the the white in the center means it's it's been created by the company. So somebody called the company and said, "Hey, can can I place this order?" And so you know what we will see is as we move on, you know we expect many more jobs to be placed by customers, and there are certain customers like this one over here that absolutely places all their business online. And so, um, you know, the, the dispatch doesn't even get involved. All that they do, they see something appears and then they go and say, yep, that's good for the schedule. The customer gets a notification. So, um, you know, we expect as adoption takes place, this is about 50-50, as adoption takes place, we, we think we'll end up 80% of people will place the orders only through this means, through the website, and then 20% will be callings and we're just fine with that. Wow, amazing. Uh, well, that's it's it's been really great to see uh, the solution actually, you know, live. And um, I guess just to sum it up, uh, if you could take a wild guess, what do you think the impact was in terms of time saved, uh, revenue, and uh, those kind of uh, key factors? Well, I would I would say this. You know, the goal was twofold. Number one, can we grow this concrete company as a platform business? to illustrate what's possible and then go in and clean up and you know just acquire all the other volumetric business we can. And, and so our possibility is that, well, what we found is that nobody has this type of technology. And so if we could get it right, that opens up an entire avenue for us where we could take our secret source and go acquire other companies and improve their operating margins, which gets me to the second point. This, 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 in, increase the number of jobs that can be run because whereas customers previously would call a dispatch person or, or say, you know, do you have time for me on the schedule? And the answer would be no. But what we can do now is allow the customer to select another time that suits them, whereas that's impossible to do when you're using, you know, a, a, a system that the customer does not have access to or cannot see. So with, with most of the dispatch software out there, there wasn't any visibility to the customer on what's available. And so now there is, you know, it's like, it's like Uber, you know, it will take me half an hour to get a cab. Okay, well, that's not gonna work for me. You know, I, I need to, you know, just drive myself or something, or a cab can be there in three minutes. And so it changes the decision points and that has impacted the revenue specifically. It freed up um, the operational folks to make better decisions in terms of taking on jobs that are that are better for the company and moving jobs that are not that great to other slots and to serve their their largest you know repeat customers better than than they could have done before because they have far more visibility in how things should look and so you know it, it opened up a new so twofold number one it opened up an entire new business opportunity for concrete on the mat where you could have um, you know this could easily be something that becomes a franchise um, or a software product that could be purchased by other owners, or it allows us to go buy other volumetric companies and then use this platform to operate them. So that was that. The second thing it did, it brought the, the, the small user into the mix in a way that couldn't be done before. That means the casual homeowner, you know, when you go to a Home Depot, um, which is a big retail store here, and you know you buy a bunch of stuff. There's a little flyer that says, "Oh, if you need concrete, here's a way that you can get concrete." And so now people that would never ever have thought they could just get concrete delivered, and they would you know find other means to get it, it's now that accessible to them. And so so we could bring the homeowner into the concrete market in a big way. And that that's that is a very lucrative side of the business because it's small pores with you know reasonable prices and there's a lot of them around and so yeah those are the two biggest impact operational and profit on the one side and you know market opportunities on the other side one sentence what do you love about our product uh that would be easy and that is i love everything about your product <laughs> and what would you say to others who are considering uh you know joining the team and and, and getting on the platform yeah, I would say to them, take your time, you know, use the other product, which names I won't mention, because <laughs> I love being alone in this world and laughing everybody. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, Marius, thank you so much. Uh, it's really been wonderful to see uh, the final product here. And um, we're looking forward to uh, implementing this, you know, with you for a lot of other businesses uh, all over the world. Fantastic. Well, great, Ben. You know, thanks. Thanks for uh, allowing me to share and, you know, getting a little bit of, of exposure out there as well. And uh, but more importantly, you know, you know, I contacted contacted you guys because I said, I hope you know how great your product is and what it's done for us. And so that that should say a lot, right? If somebody is, is so excited about it, they want to they want to share the love back to the company. And so, yeah, that's how I'm facing with you guys. And thank you for that. We absolutely appreciate it. And uh, the Titan team also supports Concrete On Demand. And uh, we look forward to hearing about you guys making big news uh, all over the U.S. and hopefully beyond. All right. Great, Ben. Thank you. Thanks, Marius.